Hello folks, Russ Scala here from the Russ Scala YouTube channel and Scala Precision Health. I'm really excited today because we're going to talk about the microbiome. Think about this for a second. In 1996, I traveled to the Great Smokies Diagnostic Lab, one of the first laboratories to do stool testing to check the flora in the intestinal tract. Well, now it's 2000, it's going to be 2018, and now this is going mainstream. And I'm really excited today. I have an expert, Keith Bell, with me that's going to talk about this microbiome so we can educate more folks, okay? How you doing, Keith? Good. How are you doing, Russ? Give us a little background on yourself, brother. Well, let's see here. Um, I started thinking a lot about health uh, back in the 1980s um, when I was a UNICEF spokesperson. And um, I was doing some uh, work um, with a lobbying organization. We were talking about ending hunger and, and poverty um, in the developing world and a lot of focus on, on uh, child health. Um, then I got involved in environmental work um, for uh, a couple decades. And um, then I started putting my um, interests together and marrying my interest in health and the environment. And um, I was inspired, actually, back in uh, 2008 uh, when um, one of our family members, actually our dog, began having um, seizures. Um, and uh, my son noticed that she had a swollen belly. And so I started thinking about the origin of her seizure activity and um, started treating her gut where the veterinarians, and I, I took her to eight vets and a neurologist, and they all wanted to treat her problem from the, from the neck up. That's sort of, yeah. even, even with animals, the, mm -hmm. the, the medical community does the same thing. I'm always so impressed when somebody, a family, you have a family member, you called your dog your family member, yeah. which is so true, yeah. because now you're being an innovator because you're trying to help somebody in your family that's, your dog that's not getting answers, and look mm -hmm. where it led. Unbelievable. Yeah, these days though, I'm talking to uh, families um, and and parents where their children are suffering um, seizure disorder. Right. And uh, you know, I've read facts. You know, we have one in 100 people suffering seizure, which actually coincides perfectly with the number of people that have celiac disease. Right. One in 100. Go. But but then we have um, you know one in every 20 children, supposedly, um, um, under five, are suffering seizure. That's an unacceptable figure. Um, and so then you have to think, where is the, this coming from? So I just can't imagine you know, having a child with a seizure disorder. This, the stress I went through trying to take care of our dog um, is one thing, but can you imagine having a child with this problem? It's pretty excruciating. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah. the ketogenic diet back in the early 1900s, we knew stopped seizures, but before mm -hmm. the neurological community got on board, um, mm -hmm. it, it took like, you know, you know, 50 years. So my, mm -hmm. m my feeling is why I love what you're doing, and I read, read a lot of your papers, and you and I had some dialogue. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that medicine is broken, and the innovation is going to come from people like us. And instead of, instead of us beating our heads against the wall trying to educate doctors or go to the Mayo Clinic or say, look at our program, mm -hmm. we go directly to the people. And mm -hmm. that's what you and I are going to do. We're going to educate the people. We're going to test the people. We're going to help them get out of the railroad tracks. And, mm -hmm. and starting out with your dog and, and how you helped your, <laughs> your dog, your family member, and then you transfer. You could have just stopped, but you decided to keep going and integrate this into, into the general public, yeah. which is like, hats off to you, man. Thank you. You know, it's quite a lot of trial and error. Um, that took place, and I was finally able to control her seizures by treating her gut, not her brain. Boom. Um, and, and, and that led me to thinking about the ketogenic diet that you okay. mentioned. Um, I mean, what's the true mechanism behind the ketogenic diet? I like to think that it's not just about raising ketones, um, but there are papers coming out now where it's showing that, that the ketogenic diet is targeting shifts in flora um, as the mechanism of success. And I've been pushing that view forward and seeing a few papers come out recently showing that the ketogenic diet does shift flora in a certain way. You know, it's, it's doing things like uh, reducing clostridium um, and, uh, and raising bacteroides uh, and, you know, things that we can see in stool testing. And then we can think about how that shift in flora is shifting the amino acid levels because amino acid levels are not just about diet. Um, it's about microbes using and producing amino acids. Right, exactly. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, uh, th th this is why I got such great synergy with you. Some of the lines, I'm always trying to figure out how can I transfer learning to behavior. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. People are not going to remember a phone number. You got to keep repeating the behavior. You know, you have to repeat a phone number a few times before you get it locked into your long-term storage. Mm-hmm. It's called long-term potentiation. Mm-hmm. But people will always remember a story. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you tell you know you tell your story about your dog. You're going to remember that Lorenzo Zoil, where mm-hmm. their son had adrenal leukodystrophy, and they turned their kid around mm-hmm. by developing an oil that was a breakdown metabolite from olive oil. They turned their kid around, mm-hmm. stood the neurological community on their ear in Europe. So they, they told a story, a movie about that. So yeah. I think the content we have is, is extremely beneficial to educate people. Number one, I always say you are not what you eat, you already absorb. Mm-hmm. We know that the microbiome is as, is, is as diverse as your fingertips. So if we are all biochemically unique and we have a unique microbiome, then testing the gut along with testing other areas as this chart we have, for instance, all these neurotransmitters affect our behavior. If the gut is the second brain, then these neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine and testosterone, oxytocin, the bonding hormone, mm. estrogen, the microbiome and, and the brain are all interconnected. Yes. And it has a lot to do. Instead of medicating somebody with an SSRI, Prozac, Paxil, and Zoloft, we can look at the intestinal tract now and not right. just, you know, you said your veterinarians are just treating the, the head of your dog for the seizures. Yes. Th- yeah. this, this, is, this all integrates into, into regular folks that need help today. You know? Exactly, and, and uh, that's the reason I brought up amino acid balance because right. those are the precursors to these neurotransmitters. Exactly, um, and things like oxytocin. I've been learning a lot about recently, um, you know, and how lactobacillus bacteria upregulate oxytocin, and that affects immune response. Uh, yeah, I always know. I always tell folks that. You know, it's funny, when you look into your dog's eyes, and, and I'm not trying to sound zen here, mm-hmm. but when, when we, like when I'm sitting here talking to you, when you're in a group, mm-hmm. you know, your group, you, you, your, your social networking has a lot to do with your health. So mm-hmm. you, they even mm-hmm. think you may share your microbiome with part of your social network. And also when you look in somebody's eyes, you secrete oxytocin, the bonding hormone. Mm-hmm. We, know, we know when women have a baby that during that bonding time, oxytocin levels or through the roof, yeah. dad sort of set off to the side here, and the mother and the baby bond. Well, we know that in social interactions, like one of the things here with aging, we have chronological aging, physical aging, emotional aging, cognitive aging, and social aging. We know that this, your social network has a lot to do with oh, how you feel, right? Completely. So I always yeah. say, show me your friends and I'll show you your health. I agree, and, and, and that really, really speaks um, strongly and eloquently toward the fact that the gut brain is a two-way street. Big time. You know, you have the, the gut affects, affecting the brain, but the brain also affects the gut. And so our emotions and our experiences are, and our social connections, and especially the, the experiences we have as children, um, can really affect our gut health. Big time, you big know. time. And, and folks, think about this. There's never gonna be one pill or one treatment protocol. We've gotta learn how to treat systems. So if your doctor takes you down the wrong road, or if your psychiatrist says that you need, for instance, an SSR, remember, if a psychiatrist says you need, need something for depression, depression is a label. Bipolar is a label. There's multiple metabolic factors here that we're looking at that can affect your depression, can affect bipolar. These are the things that, that we need to look at. Okay, so folks, at the 11th hour, where, where you get a diagnosis on the phone or you're told that you have a certain illness. Remember, there's multiple things that come into play here. And, and, and testing your gut is ground zero, right? I mean, we want to start there, would you say? Yeah, you know, I think the, you know, the guessing games are over. We can't continue to shoot in the dark. Um, we need to do some testing and, and try to interpret those results. And that's really where it becomes almost more art than science these days because this is new to everybody. Um, so, you know, it, we can read a lot of papers about it and, um, and, and try to deduce, you know, what the imbalance is all about. Um, but as I said, this is new to everyone, and, and, but that shouldn't stop us from trying to understand these results that we're getting from our stool testing. Exactly. Folks, Keith is part of our team now, and he's actually testing our clients to give us uh, another indicator of a personalized medicine treatment protocol. We know everybody is biochemically unique. Some of the sweeping generalizations are looking at the brain chemistry, nutrition, and hormonal levels on a cellular level. Now we're going to look at, look at stool samples and, and pull it all together so we could 
expedite getting people answers. A lot of our clients that I meet or patients that we meet with my doctors have been on a five-year journey and they still haven't gotten answers. So you could imagine when we sit down with them, they go, well, what are you guys going to do? I've been down. They're already upset. So we've got to make things happen mm -hmm. and give them some hope, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about? So that's why yes. I think the testing is so important. Yeah. And, and give people an idea about what they can do to shift their flora exactly. in the right direction right. to affect their brain. Folks, we want you to be able to get this testing done. So visit uh, the Russ Scala YouTube channel. Get educated. I'm going to add more content. And also visit Scala Precision Health and see what we're doing. Um, thank you very much for having me today, Russ. I'm, I'm happy to tell people about The Gut Club. We have a website. It's thegutclub.org. And we have a very active Facebook page, um, The Gut Club, as well as a stool test discussion group uh, where people are posting their, their stool test results. And we... We interpret those results and, and offer some uh, level of support, um, not as, as in-depth as we would um, working with, with uh, people as you know, individually um, with our consultations. Um, but we also do things, uh, we have a gut-brain epilepsy project, uh, and we're working on um, a microbiome vaccine safety project. It's amazing, man. I'm, I'm so glad we partnered up, man. It's so, I'm glad you came. Thanks so much. Thank Dave. you, Russ. Well,